In my last video we talked about this little device I designed. A handy tool to insert magnets. While it was doing exactly what it was supposed to do, it still wasn't perfect. The two main flaws were the big tip size and the manual reloading. In this video I am trying to fix that. Decreasing the tip size shouldn't be a big challenge. The reloading mechanism, however, is something I wanted to have in the first version already, but didn't find a good solution for. The problem is I somehow need to separate a magnet from the magazine and put it onto the tip, while the magnetic forces of the magazine are way stronger, but also change depending on the amount of magnets left in the mag. The separation will probably happen with a slider that pushes the magnet away. While using the first version I noticed something. If I put a magnet here in the activated state and pull the lever out that this happens. I was able to drag the magnet to the tip. This gave me an idea. And based on this I designed the first concept. I started with two blocks that are connected by a gear to achieve reverse motion. The top block has a tight extension and the bottom one an inserted magnet to pull in the magazine. Now when in downwards motion, the extension will push the first magnet down. The forces between the loose magnet and the magazine should be weakened enough by the distance, so now it gets attracted to this magnet. Now when this part is in downwards motion, the loose magnet follows. Once it reaches the bottom, it's supposed to tip over, ready to get inserted. Now adding a simple case with some interior plates to keep everything in place. And adjusting some parts so they can be printed easily. Printed and assembled it looks like this. Reloading is easy. Just take a stack of magnets and shove it in here. It works if I operate the device slowly. But if I go faster, the magnet falls out of the front, which of course is not supposed to happen. But apart from that and some tolerances, I'm happy. Back to Blender to fix the issues and do some improvements. The biggest change is the design. I wanted a similar look to the first version. I added the rubber suspension, but I have no idea if it works. The tip got an optimized shape. Printed and assembled it looks like this. Slightly larger compared to the first version. The suspension is working fine after some post-processing. There are a few things to keep in mind if you want to print one by yourself, but more on that later. Now it's time to test the suspensing mechanism. So far it's working way better than the previous prototype, but still, the magnet just falls out of the front or gets stuck in the device sometimes. And who wants to use a tool that works sometimes? Here I tried to visualize the problem. If the magnet gets pushed down too fast, it just falls out. First I tried to add another magnet to the tip so it's stronger and better at catching the magnet. This already reduced the error rate by a lot. I went even further to place an edge in it to completely take the motion out of the magnet. But that got the magnet stuck even more. Then I tried the steeper slope. Nothing really worked and I got really frustrated. Then I tried to reduce the thickness of the wall but forgot to adjust the tip resulting in a small edge. And yeah, it worked now. Probably because the small edge is enough to slow down the magnet, but it's still possible to drag the magnet over the edge. I really spent way too much time on this little problem, but I'm glad that it's fixed. It took quite a few attempts as you can see. 
try to avoid it, but sadly you still need two devices for the different polarities. But now let's test the device. Starting with a magnetic infinity cell. This wouldn't be possible with the previous version because of the big tip. Those are press fits and I am able to push them in with only one hand while still being speedrun worthy. Next up is the 8x8 magnet matrix with loose fits from my last video. I put over 70 magnets in the magazine at once which is not recommended but it's a stress test. This one is extra hard because one wrong movement and all the magnets jump out as I'm not using any glue again. Holding the device in the correct orientation so that the magazine faces away from the inserted magnets and always staying on distance is important. It took about one and a half minutes to insert all 64 magnets without any problems. Here is what happens in slow motion. Of course, the files for this project are like my previous and future projects available for free. But if you want to support my work, you can become a Patreon. As a small thank you, my Patreons will have access to a slightly different design. This one works with 6 by 2 mm magnets, but I also made different variants for 5.1 and 8.2 mm magnets. Now that I have so many tools lying around, I need to store them somehow. For that I designed some Gridfinity cases for the device itself, as well as some holder for the magnets. But I also created multi-bit inserts, as well as multi-board hooks. The magnet holders are really simple. Just some magnets glued on both sides and you just put the stack of magnets in between. Doesn't matter if it's not a full stack. These are all parts that are needed for one device. Except the tip, everything is printed without support. Apart from printed parts, you also need 3 magnets, 5 screws, a rubber band and maybe some super glue. We start by screwing those two parts together. Test if all the parts are moving very easy. Small imperfections like this can make it too tight and should be sanded down until the parts move freely. Ideally the parts just fall through the case. If not then sand the parts until they do.
Yo, two magnets into this hole. Now comes the hardest part. Slide in the object with the previously glued magnets. Put a stack of magnets onto its tip and move them in the same way as shown here to make sure the magnets will have the correct orientation. Depending on your printer quality you can press them in and the front magnet will get stuck in the hole on its own or you have to use another tool to separate the stack from the magnet. If it's still too loose, put some super glue on it and let it dry before pulling the stack of magnets out. Now slide in the gear and lock it with the pin. Rotate the device and place in the mag. Take the case and slide it over the body. This will also prevent the mag and the gear pin from falling out. Take the picker and push it in so the edge stands out a bit. Take the previously assembled lever and the rubber band. Depending on your rubber band strength, fold it two or three times and twine it around that little nose. Now slide it in and shortly before this edge is even with the case, Push the picker in at the same time. To check if you did it correctly, place a finger on here and pull the lever out. This edge of the picker should be slightly behind this edge. And this edge of the lever should be even with this edge. If that's not the case, pull out the lever slightly and push or pull the picker in to skip a tooth of the gear. Now screw on the tip and you're done. Thank you for watching and see you next time.